what is going on my brothers and sisters in clay we are back with yet another video so i decided today to highlight some of the amazing personalization options that you have within clay personally one of my favorite parts of the entire thing is the fact that you can personalize outreach very quickly very easily and at scale However, one thing that I've come across that has been an issue is finding inspiration for what I should personalize. What should be the little bit of personal information that I relay in my email to these people to get their attention? And of course, for everybody, it's going to be a little different, but I decided I would put together 10 different personalization ideas that you can ideally use as some level of inspiration for your own outreach. I'm going to go through each one of the personalizations, the prompt I used, and anything else that I deem important about the personalization before moving on to the next one. I'm going to go through a use case for each one of the personalizations. I'm going to go through the prompt that I use within AI, and I'll go through some of the outputs as well so I can show you that these all worked. And feel free to copy any of the prompts I use for your own outreach or at least use them as a template for further editing. Before we get started, if you guys could like this video and subscribe to the channel, that would be much appreciated so I don't get fired and I can keep making videos of me having fun with Clay because I can't complain. It's honestly kind of a vibe, but we only have like 230 subscribers at the moment, so not necessarily popping just yet. And without further ado, let's get into it. So an important thing to note before going into this is almost all of these personalizations require some sort of information that we derive from the person or company. The way in which we find some of this information is through Clay's other enrichments. An example of this is our enriched person from company integration. All it requires is this LinkedIn link right here. And when we click right here, you'll see that there is a ton of information we can use to then plug into our OpenAI integration. All right, so for our first personalization, I decided to do something a little fun. As you can see, we have a list here of some people that I'm connected with on LinkedIn. And in this hypothetical situation, I'm trying to convert them to be a client of my organic growth agency. So to do that, I decided to write them a Shakespearean sonnet ideally seducing them into making me one of their new organic marketing providers. So I'll go into the prompt really quickly and you can look over it. I'm also going to include all of these prompts in the description of the video in case you want to copy them. So without further ado, here we go. I'm attempting to sell name and their company company on my organic marketing agency, Barry Growth. Here's the person's description. Here's the prospect summary, which is like the company summary. And then I give them a quick rundown of what my agency does. And then I told them to write a Shakespearean sonnet that sells them on Barry. And the output's pretty great. So we'll do the one for Varun here, who is our head of ops over at Clay. And I'm not going to read it uh, at risk of sounding like a fool, but you can look through it really quickly and you'll see that it does a pretty great job of summarizing what Clay and Barry do in a fun, playful manner while still maintaining the structure of a sonnet. So pretty great. Not much to that one. We'll move on to the next one now. All right, so this one's a little less ridiculous and probably one you, you would use in a legitimate sales email. Um, this is referencing the prospect summary. So, or pretty much any LinkedIn account, they have a summary just kind of running down what they do, who they work for, et cetera. And I decided to use that as a reference to personalize the email just a little bit. So all I had to do for this one, pretty simple. Again, I'm attempting to sell name and their company company on my organic marketing agency give them a quick rundown of what the agency does reference or summary in a sales first liner for a cold email don't include a subject line don't use any quotation marks keep it to one sentence so this is just to be used as a building block or as an intro for your email it's not meant to actually be an entire email in itself but i think the output is pretty solid so we'll look at an example here so we'll look at this one really quickly Seeing a recent move to Intercontinental's Portfolio Management Group and your involvement in budgeting and decision making, I believe our expertise in fine-tuning product pages could significantly can boost conversion rates and be of immense value. So as you can see there, it looks like I did my research. It looks like I know what their company does. And I even mentioned that he had recently moved there, which is pretty solid for an opening email. I feel as if it seems I actually wrote it. I feel like the prospect could read that and as long as they're not super up to date on AI sales, they would think that I wrote it. This one's really good for broader prospect pools when you might not know what they do necessarily or you don't have a really small niche that you're trying to contact. This is a pretty good way of breaking the ice with people and just showing that, hey, I know what your company does. I understand where you're at personally. Pretty simple. All right, so this next one gets a little more complicated. For this next integration, we're gonna be providing recommendations as to how my agency, could improve this company's organic growth. This one's really awesome because it provides value to the prospect without them having to pay for anything or ask for anything. So off the bat, you're showing, hey, I like to provide value. I want your company to succeed. And here are a few ways in which I think it could do so. 
So the prompt for this one, using the company description, give me three organic marketing ideas for name, format it as a bulleted list, don't include anything other than the suggestions. And if you dive into the recommendations here, we'll do the one for Clay, start a blog or a vlog where team members share their experiences or challenges in managing tax. I am literally doing that right now, so good recommendation. Collaborate with influencers and thought leaders in the project management and task management industry. We are literally doing that already, good recommendation and start a user-generated content campaign encouraging clients to share their success stories. We also do that. So here are three recommendations that are so good that we've decided to implement them within Clay already. And ChatGPT is just giving those. So let's say in theory, one of our prospects hasn't implemented one of these. They'll read that and think, hey, that's a pretty good idea. Seems like this agency can help me do that. Boom, client. I'm a huge fan of this prompt in particular. I think it's really helpful. And another thing you can do to make this even more refined or advanced is to provide your own context or your own knowledge base about that particular subject. So it's not just AI making this up. It has some of your knowledge in it as well, right? So you're refining it to be almost you telling them what the recommendations are as opposed to an AI writing it for you. It also ensures that the recommendations you give are ones that you can actually back up. For example, if the AI said, hey, start a blog and you have no idea how to write a blog, you might be in trouble. So it's good to add some more detail there if you can. So for this next one, we needed to use one of our Yelp integrations, as you can see right here, find businesses. So what this integration does is it finds local businesses that revolve around a certain keyword. So if you wanted to find cafes in New York City, you can do it. It'll find you five cafes in New York City or as many as you'd like. I, I narrowed it down to five. And so for the integration associated with it, I decided to reference a business that is located close to where the prospect lives. It's important to do where they live and not where the business is located because a person could be working remote. And if you're saying, hey, I noticed your company's based in L.A., if you ever tried this out, that could be completely irrelevant to them. So it's important to do where they specifically live. So for the prompt that I used here, write a one sentence opener to name mentioning how I noticed that he was from location name and then asking whether he has been to a title. And the title is the first result for the Yelp search that I made. And I believe with the Yelp integration, I did cafes in the location. So I kept it simple. I figured most people go to cafes. I'm not gonna go too crazy here. So a couple examples. Hey Matt, I noticed you're from Brooklyn. Have you ever checked out a cool little spot called Corto? I've actually heard of this place because I live in Brooklyn. So pretty solid reference there. I've actually used this one myself and I've gotten pretty cool responses. I remember one time I had a prospect respond to me and said he'd been to the cafe that I referenced that morning, which was pretty crazy. So it's another one I'd recommend using, especially if you're trying to keep it light. All right, so for this next personalization, we had to use yet another integration. This one is get page speed data and it uses Google page speed to find out the speed score, the SEO score, et cetera of a particular website. And of course, in this case, we're gonna be using the client's website. So what we did here is we just put the domain in, ran it, and you can see right here, we have all of the different information related to their website's performance. If your company at all is related to improving website performance or even website design or website speed, this can be awesome because a customer might not even be aware that their website speed is low. And so if you tell them, hey, it's low and I can also help you fix it, you're both identifying a serious problem with the customer's business and offering a solution in the same email. So huge fan of this one as well. It also helped my SEO agency because we work on website speed. So I'm a big fan of this prompt as well. So let's get into the prompt here. Here are a few stats about their website page speed. And I gave them the SEO score, best practices score, performance accessibility scores. I run a performance marketing SEO agency called Barry, use the information to craft a creative pitch to use in an email marketing campaign. It should call out a problem with their scores and suggest a way to improve them. It should be a snippet and only two to three sentences long. So I kept it short, but I wanted to define a problem and offer a solution. So let's look at an example here. While the Orca Network's website shines in SEO best practices and accessibility with impressive scores, there's a considerable opportunity to optimize your performance score. We believe that improving your performance score not only enhances user experience, but can also contribute significantly to your SEO efforts. Partner with us to boost your site's performance and capitalize on holistic digital strategy that propels your vision forward. Now that I'm looking at this, it's a little too corporate a message. I'd probably ask ChatGPT in hindsight to make this a little more personable. It just sounds like a robot's talking. No one wants to read that. And I'd probably make it a little bit shorter. However, you get the point. You can use their website page speed to tell them, hey, something's wrong with your website. Improve it. Be better. We can make you be better. Boom, client. All right. So this one uses yet another integration called Find Tech Stack. It is our built with integration. I'm a huge fan of this one and you'll see why. All it requires is a company domain and it will output every technology that the company uses. And it can get crazy. I mean, this one's PWC, right? So it has a ton of technologies, 500. But even for smaller companies, you click on it. It gives you a full list of all the different technologies that the company uses. You can either have it as a text block or you can find each individual one. Look at all this. I mean, this is unbelievable. Huge fan of this integration. Cannot recommend more. This one I think is pretty creative and I highly recommend using it at some point. It is 
unbelievable, especially if your company works with specific technologies. It'll show the prospect that they're the perfect fit for your agency or your service or your product because they're using a technology that you directly work with. They're not going to have any questions about whether your technical ability is not there. So for this personalization, I decided to use the tech stack list to find technologies that are related to SEO and then mention that I saw that they use them. They'll both be confused that I know that they use them. And then they'll also be impressed because I was able to find that out. And they'll also be interested because I'm telling you, hey, I see you use this technology. I can help you. I'm familiar with it. So let's go into it. The prompt. I run an organic marketing agency called Barry. I'm going to give you a list of technologies that the company uses. Give me the most relevant to improving SEO performance in the form of a first line to an email for that prospect. For example, if they use Google Search Console, say something along the lines of, I see you use Google Search Console. Glad to see you're taking initiative with indexing your website. Don't use any subject lines or quotation marks. And I had to give them the list. So relatively simple prompt. Didn't take too long to type out. And an example here. I see you use Google Analytics, an excellent tool for tracking your website's performance and understanding user behavior. I noticed you're using Yoast SEO. I noticed you're using Google Tag Manager. It's a great one. Highly recommend using this one if the use case makes sense for you. Okay, so this one is pretty value prop related. Again, I'm pitching an organic marketing agency here. And so I was thinking to myself, what if a prospect is ignoring the fact that organic marketing can help their company significantly? They might be underplaying the impact that organic marketing can have. This actually happens quite frequently. I'll be talking to a client about SEO or performance optimization or CRO and their eyes kind of glaze over. I think it's because it doesn't feel like a seismic change in their company's performance. And I generally like to explain to them that organic marketing can have a drastic effect on their bottom line. So I decided to use a prompt to express that organic marketing can benefit this company. So using the company description that I provide, give me one massive benefit that name could get from organic marketing. Keep it to one short sentence. Organic marketing could greatly increase Athletic Ireland's visibility and engagement, encouraging more membership signups and fostering enthusiasm for athletics at all levels within the country. So boom, it works pretty well. I would probably do a little bit more tweaking with the prompt, make it sound a little less robotic, as is general practice for most of my outbound, but pretty good one. All right, so I'm using yet another integration for this next one. One, which is Clay's Scrape website integration. You can get a ton of website information from this integration, but what I decided to extract specifically was the company description. So as you can see here, we go through all of these and they all have different descriptions. You can get a ton of website information and company information from this integration. What I decided to use specifically was the company description. So as you can see here, it just pops out a little description. Usually it's their, I think it's their SEO description that they're, they're pulling out. But regardless, it's almost always accurate. So this is one, if you're a fan of the channel, I've used a couple times. It's one that just says what the company does well. And you might be thinking, well, what does that do? I always use it as an icebreaker or just as a way to demonstrate subtly that I know what the company does. So for example, if we're talking about Apple, I would say something along the lines of, I truly believe Apple is one of the best in the world at providing aesthetically pleasing and high performance technology to the masses or something like that, right? It's a really great way to connect to a prospect, just understanding what they do and really honing in on their value prop. So here's the prompt for that one. Using this company description, tell me one thing that name likely does very well for their customers. Format your answer as an action. For example, if the company is good at building sandcastles, say building sandcastles. Don't include any quotation marks and keep it under seven words. So very simple. I want this to be short. And this is, I think this should be the case for almost all of your prompt, except for maybe the one where I'm giving actual recommendations on the, how they can improve their company. You want to keep it short. You want to make it sound casual. You don't want to make it sound robotic. And you certainly don't want to make it seem automated. So here's a couple examples. Clay.com, sending personalized campaigns. Intercontinental.net, evaluating individual building strategy. Very simple, but I've also noticed very effective. This exact prompt has worked incredibly well for me with campaigns. I've gotten a few clients out of it. Highly recommend. Okay, so this next one is just, I, I, so I wouldn't recommend using this next one ever, honestly. I just kept it because I thought it was horrible. Like the premise of this one was making a joke about the company and what they do. I'll, I'll look at, I'll show you the prompt really quickly just because I'm typing to secure a name and their company as a client. I want to open the email up with a customized joke about their company based on the description of what they do. Just write the joke, nothing else. Here's the description. Feel free to make the joke as weird, unhinged, and attention-grabbing as possible. And honestly, they didn't do that. If there's one thing ChatGPT can't nail down yet, it's humor. Uh, and in this case, it was absolutely terrible. I'm going to give you a few examples. Why did Clay cross the road? Because it heard there was a sales prospect on the other side who hadn't received a personalized AI-powered message yet. I think if someone sent me this email, I'd block them and put them on a watch list. Why did Comcast start a bakery? Because they're already so good at rolling out dough and broadband, cooking up hot mobile deals, and sprinkling the icing with incredible theme parks. Plus, it's the yeast they can do for their passionate team who are always rising to the occasion. 
that is such a horrible joke. I really have no words to express how abhorrently upset it makes me. Just reading that out loud gave me a cringe level that I really can't express to you through this screen. Please, I beg you, do not use this prompt to try to reach out to prospects. If anything, it will get you fired and you'll never be able to work in the industry in which you work ever again. All right, moving on to the next one. This one I decided to use a formula for. I did so because I already had a snippet in mind and I figured I would just use that instead. It's a bit easier. We also had to use an integration here, our Enriched Company integration with Paddable. I'm gonna say off the bat right now, this is, in my opinion, the best Enriched Company integration we have right up there with LinkedIn. The amount of information you can get on any given company is unreal. I mean, look at all of these data points. It's ridiculous. I mean, they have crazy stuff. Like, as you can see, they don't have data on on this for PwC in particular, but like, Billing type prediction, number of retail locations, prices on pricing page clean. Like they have the most insane data points that you can map out for integrations. Pretty crazy annual revenue too. What I decided to use this integration in particular for is to find the company headcount. So it's very accurate or at least relatively accurate. I think we have less than 27 people, but relatively accurate. And I decided to just say, hey, I noticed that you have around 27 people at Clay. Is anybody on your team working on SEO at the moment? So just another one of those research automations, just saying, hey, I know how big your company is or how small your company is. Anybody working in on SEO. This one can backfire a little bit if there are a ton of people working at a company though. Like for example, I noticed you have 272,000 people at PwC. Is there a single person working on SEO at the moment? I feel like that's almost like a little sarcastic, you know? So use this one with caution. I would only do so with startups because pretty much say, hey, there aren't many people working at your company right now. Is anybody honed in on SEO? Is anyone hyper-focused on organic growth? Because if not, I can be that person. But for companies like PwC, it's not very effective. All right, so that is it for this video. Again, I will include all the different prompts in the description of the video just in case you want to use them or edit them or make fun of them. And I hope this video brought you some level of value. And I really appreciate you guys making it all the way through if you did. Feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn if you guys have any questions and happy prospecting.